So the starting grid, Ansel Murray and Freddie Baker on the front row of the grid. Albert Backler and Albert Farrow on the second row. Harley Bradbury Stretton and Sydney Nell, who will go off P6 on the starting grid. Then Max Joy and Jensen James Williams, Hadley Jarvis and Hugo Williams, with Arthur Bath in the number 24, taking up the last position on the grid as we get ourselves ready for the Might E Bambinos. Silent but rapid around the GYG circuit. Always very exciting. Oh, we've had a spin on the rolling lap. Actually had a spin on the rolling lap. One of the drivers going up the hill. Was that a spin on the rolling lap? Now, who was that? I wonder if that was Sidney Nell. As he comes towards our position at the top of the hill. I didn't quite make out who it was, but I think it might have been Sidney Nell. Just uh, warming up his tyres. Very easy to lose the back end of these carts because they've got so much torque. Uh, obviously being electric machines, but that won't cost him any. He has managed to get going again and he will bring the cart obviously to the start finish straight once again. Let's not forget that these are Bambinos, so the drivers are as young as four out there on the starting grid. I certainly wasn't racing carts at this level, aged four. Certainly would have liked to have been. Quite glad nowadays that I'm a parent and my three kids don't want to. That's just my own personal preference because that would have been a very expensive bank balance. But... Uh, Fabulous to see that all of the competitors in the Mighty Bambinos are all fairly evenly matched. Great performances from them so far. And we're definitely going to see some uh, great battles from them as things continue to progress. But the Mighty Bambinos are now lining up on the starting grid again. And this will be the charge forward. So the last few competitors just getting themselves into position. It's definitely been uh, a very exciting uh, battles for the uh, contenders as we are now getting ourselves ready to line up on the starting grid. It looks like it is definitely going to be tough from the start, but we are ready to see the mighty Bambinos go for the green light. Here we go. And Ansel Murray versus Freddie Baker to the first corner. A good start from Murray and a good start as well from Freddie Baker. No major problems there for the mighty Bambinos. They've definitely given us uh, a good pressure cooker to build up to the first tight hairpin. Good start there from Sidney Nell. He seems to have made up a couple of places early doors and is up into third position. So a good run from Sidney Nell thus far. As the field makes its way through the top of the hill. Always a tricky part of the race this. Everyone just tries to get themselves into a good rhythm. But Ansel Murray ahead of Freddie Baker and Sidney Nell. That's your top three for the moment. Oh, a bit of a wobble there for Freddie Baker. Very easy to uh, lose the back end of the car. We've had a spin in the middle of the hairpin there. I can't quite make out who that is. But we've certainly got uh, a cart off in the hairpin at the bottom of the hill. So can't quite uh, tell you who that is, unfortunately. We'll try and pick that up at the end of the lap. But hopefully all of the drivers have managed to keep going. Freddie Baker basically going with Ansel Murray now. And they have uh, dropped the rest of the field. Freddie Baker's actually got a run out of turn one. They're going to go side by side. Ansel Murray and Freddie Baker. Baker with a good chance here. And he's going to get the draft. And he is in the lead. Freddie Baker takes the lead on the second lap. So a very good start. I could tell you that the driver in trouble was Max Joy. Oh, back to the lead comes Ansel Murray. So just as he's lost the lead, he gets it straight back again through Spoon Corner. And these two have already pulled three seconds clear of Sidney Nell and Ar Albert Farrow. So amazing as now Ansel Murray runs a little wide. Freddie Baker's going to come at him. And what a fantastic duel between these two young lads. Ansel Murray and Freddie Baker. Good dueling between the two. And Sidney Nell, third position from Albert Farrow and Albert Backler. Then Harley Bradbury Stretton, Jensen James Williams from Arthur Bath, Hadley Jarvis, Hugo Williams and Max Joy, who had his moment on the first lap. But fortunately, he has still got uh, a little way to make up and he's got time to do it too. So Ansel Murray and Freddie Baker up the hill. Backler and Nell. As Albert Backler has now managed to catch and pass Sydney Nell for that third position on the podium. Freddie Baker going for his run on the inside of Ansel Murray and he takes the lead. Can he hold it on the exit? Because Ansel Murray is trying to come straight back at Freddie Baker. Yes, he secures the lead this time. 
So Freddie Baker learned very quickly there. Well, I can make my move on the way up to Spoon Curve, but if he gets me back again, then uh, it doesn't matter because I'm going to lose the lead out again anyway. This time, he's the one making the overtaking move on Ansel Murray into the hairpin. So a great display and a good job so far from Freddie Baker, who leads the race over Ansel Murray. Then it is Albert Backler. Sydney Nell still there or thereabouts in fourth position. The leading novice driver is Albert Ferro in front of Harley Bradbury Stretton and Jensen James Williams. Max Joy has already charged his way up into fourth position, uh, eighth position, sorry. So a good recovery drive. And then it is uh, Arthur Bath, Hadley Jarvis and Hugo Williams that charge in behind them. Freddie Baker still going strong as he runs in the lead of the race ahead of uh, Ansel Murray. Backler and Nell, third and fourth position. Dropping back a little way now. Eight and a half seconds back to Backler. Twelve and a half seconds back to Sidney Nell, who is now under pressure from Albert Farrow. But these two, Freddie Baker versus Ansel Murray, arguably the two fastest drivers from the class this weekend. And they've definitely given us plenty of entertainment and excitement out on the track. So Backler, third place. Nell in fourth has now fallen about four seconds away from the back bumper of uh, Backler's cart. So Albert Backler, obviously uh, nowhere near as under massive pressure from uh, Sidney Nell as we saw earlier in the race as Ansel Murray gets the fastest lap of the race. The 96 machine trying to draw level and get alongside Freddie Baker. They're going to go up to traffic as well. That's going to be an interesting dynamic. So here's the move from Ansel Murray. Can he get through into the lead of the race? Yes, he does. So Ansel Murray takes back the lead with three and a half on the clock. You've got to be so careful with these back markers as well. You don't want to get tripped up. Driver's going through. Ansel Murray tips his way through. So does Freddie Baker. No change between the two of them. Apart from maybe Freddie Baker is just the tiniest bit closer to the back of Ansel Murray than he was before. And the drivers just having to weave their way through the traffic. And Samari and Freddie Baker making light work of the drivers up at the front end. Just to choose their moments carefully. And Ansel Murray, very wise uh, positioning for him there because he was trying to out uh, basically outsmart uh, Freddie Baker to keep himself in a strong position out there. And he managed to get himself through the traffic just a little fraction better than Freddie Baker. That gives him a little bit more breathing space. Less than 2 minutes 40 on the clock. Still Ansel Murray defends. Freddie Baker's got another crack at it. He decides to go. He decides not to go for it on that particular occasion. That's definitely a last lap bid, though. So he will obviously be thinking there might just be a chance to uh, work his way forward. But Ansel is ahead of Freddie. And these two drivers having a great little tussle. Further back, meanwhile, we've got good battles in the middle of the field. This is the uh, challenge between uh, Arthur Barth, who gets out of the way. And some of the other drivers up at the sharp end who are having a bit of a spicy run of it. That is the 54 of Backler that runs in third position. Where are the leaders? Here they are. It's Ansel Murray and Freddie Baker still very close together with two minutes remaining on the clock. Freddie Baker's got a chance here up the inside. He thinks better of it. Ansel Murray will have been a little bit hesitant there. That might come back to bite him as they come up the top of the gradient. Because he might get a run on young Ansel Murray. Here they go again. Where's Freddie Baker going to pitch the cart? He has a look. He has a go. Inside line. Inside line. Will that do for Freddie Baker to take the lead? No, it will not. Because Ansel Murray will hold on around the outside. Drifts out wide on the exit. Freddie Baker may get another opportunity. But Ansel Murray showing incredible confidence behind the wheel to thwart all attacks that come his way from Freddie Baker. This is going to be a really interesting and intriguing end to the race battle for these two boys. Ansel Murray and Freddie Baker. It's very close to each other indeed as they come off the turn. Now this is those two drivers just uh, stretching out in front. A minute to go. So obviously there's going to be one lap and then the lap after this one. We are on the penultimate lap. So now Freddie Baker's got to run. This is when he's going to go for it. He has said I had to wait till... They all say in racing at this level, they're going to wait until the penultimate lap to make the move. And Freddie Baker has gone through past the straight. But was that tactical from Ansel Murray? Is he just going to get him straight back again on the inside? No, he's not. Because Freddie Baker holds him at the line. And still, 
Freddie Baker leads, but Ansel Murray very consistent behind him. The roles are now reversed. So can Freddie Baker hold on to this win in front of Ansel Murray? Because this is a very tough cookie. Both drivers are going to work incredibly hard to get themselves ready for the final later on. But this is certainly obviously the precursor to that. So Baker versus Murray still going strong at the sharp end of the field. But now we are going to see what uh, the battle is going to produce as we go into the last lap. Baker and Ansel. So Baker and Murray very close together. Can Ansel Murray get himself back into the lead of the race? They've got traffic to deal with up the road. That's going to give them a really good shot at it. But it's not guaranteed. They've got to be so careful as they tiptoe their way through the traffic. And is that the move from Ansel Murray? He has got back ahead of Freddie Baker. So Ansel Murray is now in front of Freddie Baker. A bit of hesitation from Freddie Baker as they were going through the traffic. Ansel Murray almost had a problem of his own there, tripping over a back marker. And now Ansel Murray has been able to time his move to perfection on the last lap to get the lead at exactly the right moment when it counts. You only need to lead one lap of the race and you only need to lead out of the final turn to make it work. But great re response times there from Ansel Murray. Freddie Baker gave it everything. But just to the end there, it was always going to be tricky to keep a fired up and motivated Ansel Murray at bay. Into the final corner and Ansel Murray will take the win in front of Freddie Baker. Bath and Williams come through to finish up. It is uh, Jensen, James Williams and Max Joy that cross the line in unison nearly with Hadley Jarvis dropping further back through the field. Look how big the gap was back to third position as Albert Backler is going to come through for third in front of Albert Faro and Sidney Nell in the top five. There they come. A good result from Albert Backler. You're going to need to wait another few seconds until Faro and Nell get back into the shot. And the only other driver in the mix with them is, of course, Harley Bradbury Stretton. So through they come, and an absolutely delighted Albert Faro. He's jubilant to come through in fourth place. And then the last driver home is going to be Hadley Jarvis.